Hey you folks, Quilly Team here, and welcome to another EVE Online tutorial for complete beginners. This episode is going to focus on drones, which are amazing. But before we get into that, I want to say uh, thank you for everyone who left uh, great comments and questions and things like that on the first four episodes of this series. Uh, I recorded all four episodes sort of back to back before the first one went online. But uh, now that uh, now, now all four episodes so far have gone up and there's some great stuff in there. Lots of content for me to make some more episodes. So thank you very much for that. Also, thanks to all the veterans who are hanging out in the comments, um, answering questions, clarifying things. Uh, both from, you know, from other viewers as well as myself. Much, much, much appreciated. Also, I just want to say thank you. There's a, a few people have gone and uh, sent in a few bucks to this account. Don't worry about it. You don't have to do that. Um, my primary account does have a few billion it's gone it's, so we're we're not we're not hurting for money. It's going to be okay. But I really, really, really do um, appreciate the thought that that was really nice of you guys. Um, but yeah, don't don't worry about it going forward. It's going to be okay. All right. Let's talk about drones. So every ship, as far as I know, every ship in EVE, other than the capsule, um, can field drones. Drones are tiny little robot ships that you can go and deploy from your main vessel, and they will do a variety of things for you. The most common use of drones is probably combat drones, but there's various things for electronic warfare, as well as mining drones, salvage drones, drones that let you like remotely repair other ships, all kinds of things like that, which is really, really swell. And because basically every ship can use them, you will want to use them because they make whatever you're doing better. For example, even when you're doing, if you say you're doing mining in the Venture, right? I love the Venture. I don't know why I have a love affair with the Venture, but I do. I think it's a swell little ship. Um, wh when you're mining with the Venture, most likely your turret slots will all be occupied by main mining lasers. However, the Venture can pack a couple of drones in it, so you may as well throw a couple of combat drones in there in case, while you're out there mining in an asteroid belt, some random, you know, NPC little pirate ship comes by, you can deploy your drones and have your drones blow that sucker to space dust. Now, that's not going to be enough to protect you from a dedicated, say, player ambushing you, but, and again, that, that, those are topics for another day. How do you gauge? Let's say you want to you want to do a dedicated drone thing. How would you do a dedicated drone ship? Well, let's like take a look at the ship tree. If we go ahead into the Neocom menu over here and go to ship and go to ship tree. Again, this will list all the ships in the game. It should default to whatever your empire is. In my case, it's the Galente. But of course, you can look at anything you want over here. Now, as you mouse over the ships, you will occasionally find a ship like say the Tristan over here that has bonuses to various drone activities. The, the Tristan here for every level in your Galente frigate skill. So I think there's up to five skill levels for this one. For every level you have in that skill, your drones will have a 10% bonus to hit points and tracking speed. Tracking speed helps you hit small, fast moving targets, like say enemy frigates, for example. So this makes your drones tougher and slightly more accurate, which is quite cool. Um, I think every faction has a, uh, a frigate with some amount of drone bonus. Now, Tristan isn't necessarily that impressive in terms of bonuses, but it does have other things going on. For example, the Incursus is quite a nice combat ship, you know, with its small hybrid turret damage, the armor repair skill, so it can tank up. Although, do note the Tristan here actually has even more bonus to small turret, hybrid turret. Oh, it's tracking speed as opposed to damage. Okay, yeah. So the Incursus will do more damage with its turrets. It's quite good for that. But even though the Incursus is mostly meant to be a pew-pew type of direct shooting ship, if we go to Show Info and we go to the Attributes tab, we can see that the Incursus also has a certain amount of drone capacity and bandwidth. Now, these numbers tell you capacity is how many drones this ship can carry, Bandwidth is how many drones this ship can control. Now, capacity is measured in cubic meters, and bandwidth is measured in megabits per second. However, you can ignore these units because drones have a certain size, a certain physical size, as well as a certain bandwidth requirement, and those numbers will always match up. For example, a small drone takes up five cubic meters and five megabits a second. So. When you see a five, that means one small drone in both categories. Don't worry about the units. This means the Incursus can carry one drone and control one drone, which ain't very much, but even it shows it's got some ability to do it. If we can compare this to the Tristan, which is clearly based on this trait, probably meant to control drones. If we show info here, the Tristan has 
a capacity for 40 drones. That means it can carry eight drones. And it has a bandwidth of 25. That means it can control up to five small drones at a time. It can carry more drones than it can control, and that's useful for two things. One, it means you've got some spare in case one of your drones gets destroyed, which can happen. Two, it means you can carry a variety of different drones for different tasks. If you can carry more drones you can control, you can sort of swap in and out what you decide to do. Now, I'm not necessarily going to go out and advise that, oh, you know, buy a Tristan and do cool drone combat things. Although, sure, it would work. Um, this would let you take on uh, low-level combat sites, you know, level one missions from the, um, the combat or the security mission agent, for example, could probably be done perfectly fine in a Tristan here. Um, but you may also want to consider looking a little higher up. Most, or if not all factions, may also have a destroyer with drone bonuses. For example, the Algos over here is the destroyer, next size level up. It has bonuses to drone hit points and damage per Galente destroyer skill level. In addition to that, regardless of your skill, it has a roll bonus of 25% to drone maximum velocity. Very spiffy. We can also right click on it and see that it can carry 60 cubic meters worth of drones and control 35 a megabits per second worth of bandwidth. Now, um, with the Algos, you might not just want to keep adding more and more small drones because your skill, your personal skill as your character, determines how many drones you can control, and there's a, a cap to that in the end. Um, but you can consider bringing bigger drones, so medium drones, for example, which take up more room and more bandwidth, but then keep you within your, your true hard limit of how many drones you can pilot at once. Um, if you do Googling for various ship fits for drone combat and ratting and whatnot, you will find many, many references to the Vexer and specifically, especially the Vexer Navy issue. Now, these are cruiser level ships and the Navy issue one at 57 million will seem quite pricey to you. The Vexer, the base Vexer at 8 million may still seem quite pricey to you as well. Um, it is a very nice drone ship. It's got a fair amount of capacity, 125 cubic meters capacity, 75 megabit per second bandwidth. Um, again, this doesn't mean you're going to control massive amounts of small drones, but it means you're going to control maybe, you know, a, a number of medium drones, maybe a combination of medium and small. Um, the reason you will find many references to the Vexer and the Vexer Navy fit over here, that's not the button I wanted to hit, I wanted to hit show info, is because until very recently, the drone bandwidth on the Vexer Navy issue was quite a bit higher. I think it was 120 or 140 or something like that. It meant that this ship could really control heavy drones and was ludicrously powerful at just sort of like AFK killing of random rats because you could just release all your drones and basically walk away from the keyboard and it would just murder everything on its own. Um, to avoid sort of excessive sort of abuse of that and various game balance things, the Vexer here was just recently changed. Its bandwidth was dropped considerably, but uh, and to balance that, it got many more high power slots over here and turret slots. I think it may have only used to have one. I'm not sure. Um, and now it has a lot more, which means it can mount a lot more guns itself, which means this thing is actually a lot better at, um, at player versus player combat now, because you can just do a lot more upfront damage with this. But when it, kill, it comes to auto killing of NPCs, it's a little weaker. It's still a fantastic ship. It's just if you Google Vexer fits, you're going to find a lot of outdated fittings that don't apply anymore because the slots have all changed and everything like that. So I just want to put a little caveat out there because as I say, this tutorial, we're going to try to keep things fairly simple. I'm not going to get into nitty gritties or recommend specific fittings for your ships. That's what Google's for because there's like, there's as many fittings out there as there are pilots, basically. Um, that being said, we are going to go and outfit a Tristan over here as a, you know, just a low level drone frigate. And I actually did already go and purchase it. So it should be in my inventory. There we go. We have a Tristan here. So this is the Galente um, drone frigate. So I'm going to go ahead and make active, get into the ship. And I think it looks lovely, by the way. Look at this thing. Doesn't it look cool? I really like the look of this ship a lot. I think it's really interesting. Um, so when you want to go and deck out your ship to be ready to do stuff, generally speaking, you're going to open the fitting window and you're going to start by fitting out all the slots. So we've got high, medium, low power slots. We've got rig slots. This ship has room for two turrets. Uh, so three high slots, but only two turrets. Um, so that might limit the amount of guns. Of course, you can fit other things in here. I mean, you could fit mining beams, but no, um, or anything like that. 
Before, but the thing is, because this is going to be sort of a drone carrying a ship, let's actually look at the drone situation first. So I'm going to close this window. We don't have to interact with the fitting window right now. We're going to go into our inventory instead, and we're going to look at our Tristan. So this is our ship here. So if with the ship selected, we have its cargo bay selected. So its cargo bay has room for 140 cubic meters. In addition to that, it has a separate drone bay. And this is 40 cubic meters. You can only launch drones in space from the drone bay. I mean, you can carry drones in your cargo bay, but you won't be able to use them. There may be reasons why you want to carry them around in there, but that's not going to be helpful for combat. So your drone bay over here, this is where you're going to want to put the drones you're actually going to want to deploy. So let's go and open the regional market. Of course, the regional market is your big shopping mall. Ooh, let me close that. I was ahead of things. It's your big shopping mall. This is um, everywhere that players are buying and selling stuff. And there's an actual drones category over here. If we expand this, you will see there's a bunch of different types of drones. So your standard combat drones over here. Fighters are basically just bigger drones. They're only used by carriers, which are huge ships or structures like star bases. So we can ignore fighters for now. Uh, we've got combat utility drones and electronic warfare drones. They'll do all kinds of different things. Like the Acolyte over here will um, drain the power, I think, from a ship. Uh, neutralization duration... Neutralization amount, five gigajoules. Yeah, so it basically drains power away from ships. There's a bunch of funky drones you can do. Mining drones and salvage drones are both awesome. Unfortunately, neither one of them... Well, luckily, neither one of them are required. But, unfortunately, neither one of them are available to an alpha account. Mining drones, basically what you do is you deploy them in space. And just like how you would target an asteroid and then use your mining lasers... You target an asteroid and tell your mining drones to go and mine that asteroid. So on your venture, which has room for two drones, you could have two lasers, two mining lasers, and have two extra mining drones on top of that. That being said, that's probably not the right thing to do in a venture. If you're using two mining lasers, then you have no room for guns. So instead, as a venture, I tend to have two mining lasers, and then I carry two combat drones with me to defend me from random pirates. Um, but... The, the bigger mining barges and things like that can carry quite a bit more drones, and you can have a combination of mining drones and defensive drones and things like that. Salvage drones basically work the same as a salvage beam. Um, you target a wreck. So with, a, uh, with a, um, a salvage beam, you target a wreck, activate the beam, and they'll sit there and try to rip the ship apart and give you some loot. Salvage drones work the same. You deploy them to space. If you have a ship targeted and you tell your salvage drones to salvage, they'll run out to that ship, rip it apart, and then fly back to you with the loot, and then they'll wait for you to issue another targeting command. However, and this is very handy, if you don't have anything targeted with a salvage drone, target nothing, deploy your salvage drones, and then tell them to salvage, they'll automatically run to the closest wreck, rip it apart, fly back to you to drop off the loot, then immediately fly back out to the next closest wreck, and repeat, and repeat, and repeat. Salvage drones are really handy post-battle. Just, again, make sure you have nothing targeted, Deploy the drones, tell them to salvage, and uh, they'll just go and rip apart all the uh, all the nearby ships for you. Very fun. Uh, but again, not available on an alpha account. Again, you don't need them because you can still just use a salvage beam and do everything. But, you know, their quality of life is very handy. But we're going to talk about combat drones right now because 99% of the time this is what you're going to be using um, over here. And what they do is they help you fight. Combat drones uh, tend to be pretty smart depending on how you set things up. And we'll look at that. They'll automatically attack anyone who attacks you, which is kind of lovely. Plus, you can tell them to attack specific people. Combat drones come in four different sizes, light, medium, heavy, and sentry. Sentry are, like, very big and large. They don't move. Sentry drones just sit still. They have a really long range, do really good damage, but they don't move on their own. Um, so we'll mostly just talk about light, medium, and heavy. And the light, medium, and heavy drones basically all work the same. The bigger drones have more hit points and do more damage, but move slower and have worse tracking speed. Oh, good. I talked long enough to fill the time to get the light drone operation level one, which is a skill I needed for the next thing. Anyway... Um, they also, they also take up a lot more space. So if we click on a, on a particular drone over here, so this is a heavy drone. If I open up the info for the Ogre 1, for example, um, it takes up 25 cubic meters. And that also means it takes up 25 megabits a second of bandwidth. So, um, they're very large. The medium drones, if we compare over here, like, let's say we take a look at the hammerhead takes up 10 and the light drones all take up five five over here so it's 5 10 25 so depending on how much room you've got in your drone um hold 
and how much bandwidth you've got. You can have different combinations of heavy, light, and uh, and medium. But in a frigate, we're only going to be using light because, I mean, it, it doesn't have that much room. Also, we need a lot more skill to use the medium and or heavy drones, certainly. So... Um, for these combat drones, they come in basically four flavors. Now, whether we're talking, you know, again, heavy, you've got Berserkers, ignore the Gecko, the Gecko is a special different thing. You've got the Berserker, the Ogre, the Praetor, and the Wasp. Four different flavors of combat drones, and then you have the level two versions of them. Same thing is true for the Light, Acolyte, Hobgoblin, Hornet, and Warrior, those are your four types, and then there's a level two version of them, and also the same type, the same thing with the mediums over here, ignoring potentially some specials. What's the difference between these four drones? The big difference is that one of these drones is the fastest, but hits the weakest. Another drone hits the hardest, but moves the slowest. And the other two are somewhere in the middle. The Hobgoblin is the one that hits for the most damage, and the Warrior is the fastest. Let's take a look at that. If I go ahead and show info on the Hobgoblin, and if I hold Shift and show info on the Warrior, so it opens a separate window, we can compare the two. And mostly what we're going to do well, first of all, actually, there's a slight uh, hit point difference. You can see the Hobgoblin has 200 hit points versus the 130 over here of the Warrior. Um, and then if we scroll down to the bottom, we can see while they have the same rate of fire, they have a different damage modifier, 1.3 versus 1.6. The Hobgoblin does more damage. But you can also see the velocity over here, right? Hobgoblin, much slower. I mean, it's much faster than your ship. These are drones are still really fast. Even the slowest drone is really fast. Um, but the warrior is much faster. If you're going to be using drones against NPC pirates and stuff like that, all you're going to want to do is mostly just use the hobgoblin. You want the thing that hits the hardest and you're not too worried about speed. Certain PvP applications, things like that, you might want faster drones to catch people. Um, but that's well beyond the scope of this particular thing. It is worth noting that different drones do do different types of damage. Hobgoblin does thermal damage, for example, and the warrior here does explosive damage. You can see their base damage is the same at 20, but again, the damage modifier for the Hobgoblin is higher, so it will do more damage. Different types of ships have different types of innate resistances. There may be, there are certain types of enemies, like NPC enemies, that will be more damaged from explosive damage than thermal and you can do some certain amount of min-maxing if you're explicitly going after combat sites. Um, but let's, for now, we can just say, what you want to do is you want to get hobgoblins. Luckily, drones are super duper cheap. Hobgoblins here are costing about 2200 isk right now in this particular region of space. Although at this particular station where I'm at, uh, the only people selling them are selling them at 4,000, but 4,000 isk is still super duper cheap. Things do get a lot more expensive if you go to level two. Level two hobgoblin, 390,000 isk, a lot more expensive. Um, they are much better. If we take a quick look over here, show info, uh, we can see its damage modifier. It's faster. It's got a more powerful damage modifier. It'll also have some more hit points as well. At some point, yeah, ultimately you're going to want to go to these level twos, but not, you know, not just starting out because you, you're not necessarily, you, you don't want to commit that much money if you don't necessarily know 100% what you're doing. If you lose something that costs 2,000, heck, if you lose the whole ship, it's going to be fine. Our whole ship costs less than a single Hobgoblin 2 right now. I think I bought the, um, the Tristan that I'm going to be flying for this. I purchased for 250,000 isk right over here. <coughs> Dirt cheap right so it's very disposable which is great all right so our tristan if we want to use the drones we have to go and load them in the drone bay i have actually gone already and purchased some hobgoblins right here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take these hobgoblins i have 10 of them i'm going to drag them into the drone bay of my tristan now i will get a message over here hey there's no more no room for more in destination container this container only has room for eight drones i tried to drag 10 in which is i'm going to get in this notice but you can see it still says eight over here if i hit okay I have two hobgoblins left in my inventory. I have eight in my drone bay. The drone bay is filled up. That's exactly what I wanted to do. So now with nothing else, we are, we are good to go. We will not actually like to go with a naked fit. We would like to throw some stuff in here. <coughs> I'm going to see if I have anything just handy dandy sitting around that I can throw in. Uh, I'm going to sort by slot. So I'm just going to grab, um, I'm going to grab a blaster over here, a salvager, uh, I'll need some bullets here, antimatter charges there. So technically I have a gun. Really, I'd want another gun as well. I mean, I guess I can throw in a civilian weapon. It's really not very impressive, but there we go. We'll do that. Um, oh, you need different types of bullets, don't you? 
You need iron charges. No, you don't. Right click, show info. Oh no, you don't actually need bullets. See, these slots over here confuse me. I was pretty sure we didn't need bullets. This is a weak weapon, but what the heck, we'll put it in there. What about the other slots? Well, in the other slots, you might want to get afterburners. You might want to get micro warp drives, depending on what you're doing. You may want to get things that boost your defenses. There are, however, items that do boost your drones. And actually, these high slots over here, rather than putting in a civilian Gatling gun, if I right click, self filter for slot, um, and clear that, now, uh, drone upgrades. There we go. For example, I can get a drone link augmentator. If I go ahead and get this, increases drone control range. This lets me control drones 20 kilometers further away. Hey, there's a good question. How far away can I control my drones? Well, on this Tristan, it's got a default range of 25 kilometers over here. So I can get 20, I can almost double the control range of my drones by dropping a drone link augmentator in this high slot. Hey, that's pretty good. Anything else I can do to increase my range? Yeah, skills. So there's tons of skills for drones. If we go ahead and open our character sheet. Now, normally you'll either have this set to can train now, or perhaps have prerequisites for. For the sake of this, I'm going to set this to all skills, which I don't normally do because it's just too noisy. But this is the drones category. There's 26 different skills in the drones category. Now, some of them you cannot access on an alpha account. The yellow pips over here represent things that you can only access if you've got Omega. But I mean, you're not gonna be doing fighter uh, hangers. You're not gonna be doing heavy fighters. You would appreciate it if you could do salvage drones or mining drones. That would be kind of handy, but it's not the end of the world. Um, the base skill is drones. You've got to get this skill first before you get anything else. And in fact, you uh, for some of these things, you actually have to have drones at level five um, before you can uh, get them. For example, drone durability gives you more drone hit points, drone navigation, which gives them more velocity. I think you need drones level five to be able to do this. So the base drone skill is an important research. Also, the drone skill here determines how many drones you can control. You can control one drone per skill level. Currently, I have I have level three of drones, which means I can only control three drones at a time. So this whole bandwidth over here, you can see it actually it, three active because it knows like I've got drones in here, right? I've got eight drones. I have enough bandwidth I could control five of them, except I only have the skill to control three. Only three skill three drones, which isn't very great. Which is why, honestly, getting to drones five is going to be a huge priority for everyone because almost regardless of what you're going to do, you're going to want to be able to control five drones at some point. Um, the fourth drone level takes a long time to do. Or sorry, the fifth is what I meant. The fourth is just a little over a day, which isn't the end of the world. The fifth, I think, will take something like four days. And okay, that, that's a pretty long time to wait. Although, again, if you uh, signed up for EVE using my recruiter friend down below and started off with 750,000 skill point, or starting next week, I think it's going to be a million skill points, um, then, you know, you'll, you'll have that sorted right from turn, turn one. And then after you do that, you're going to want to invest in the other drone skills. Uh, here, interfacing, 10% more drone damage. What? So good. Sharpshooting gives them more range, which is good. The other thing you're going to want to consider is drone avionics, which every level of this gives you an extra five kilometers of range. And then later on, if you have an Omega, you can advance drone avionics, which is an extra three kilometers per level over here. So not quite as potent as the basic avionics, but it does let you stack on more and more distance. So the important thing is the base drones skill, which you need to control drones. You're also, for the combat, want at least one level of light drone operations. You need the first level of this to be able to use light, dr light combat drones at all. And as a bonus for every level of this, the drones do 5% extra damage. Hey, lovely. Um, so again, Google the fits for your different ships, and in particular, Google the drone fits. You'll find good advice for what to put in these extra slots. You can see the, um, I right click here for the, um, the filter for the medium slots. There's still drone upgrades over here. Drone navigation computers you can install, which gives them more speed. Um, uh, omnidirectional, I'm trying to remember what that is. Does this give them more tracking? Yes, it gives your, your drones more tracking. Tracking is used to hit fast moving little ships. If you're using small drones, which are have great speed and great tracking already, you won't need this. But omnidirectional tracking link becomes more important if you want to use medium and especially heavy drones to hit small ships. They will need more tracking boosts. The low slots, I think, might be the most potent for the drones because this is where you get your drone damage amplifier. 15% bonus damage over here for your drone damage amplifier. Note, if you use more than one, there is a diminishing return. Um, I think a lot of people still use more than one, though. So um, I might buy some. Let's go ahead. I will view market details. There we go. 
So, you know, at 50k, it's not too bad. I'm going to go ahead and buy, uh, I'm going to buy two. There we go. Spend 100k on that. That's going to be fine. And then that is drone damage amplifier. I'm just going to drag a couple into there. Excellent. For rigging slots, I don't think there's anything specific for drones. Apparently I'm wrong. There are some. I think a lot of people end up putting de various defense boosters in there. Anyway, I'm going to leave this ship mostly naked. It's going to be A-OK. -okay. Um, I got the salvager beam. I've got a gun available. That's going to be fine. I'm going to have my drones. Let's go and see if we can find something to, to kill. So we've remembered we actually have our drones in our drone bay. Excellent. I'm going to go ahead and undock. Now, in the Dodixie system, I don't think there's going to be any combat zones. Um, I think they can spawn. I just think they get cleared pretty quickly. So I'm just going to go to a neighboring sector and hope we run into something. Now, uh, combat areas will show up on your um, probe scanner over here. So even if you're not doing probes, which we don't have any probes in the ship, this is useful for that. So I'm going to go and just bop over to, um, I don't know, Violet over here. I'm going to jump to that and we'll see what we've got. Right. Now, one thing to note, and we can talk about this before we get to the site. If you have drones in your ship, you will have this drone window open. There you go. Drones. This tells us how many drones we have in our bay. We have eight in there. I can expand this and see, ah, I've got some hobgoblins. And how many drones I have in space, which is zero over here. I don't have any drones deployed. What we're going to do, if we, even if we don't see a combat site, I'll, I'll go ahead and do this. I'm, I'm crossing my fingers that there'll be a combat site in, uh, in uh, Valad. Let's see. And no, that's too bad. Um, we could go and consider maybe just hopping over an asteroid belt. I'll, I'll do I'll do a jump to one because sometimes there's NPCs around. If there's not, it's no big deal. I don't. Can you target like an asteroid or something? I'm not sure. Still, it's gonna be fine. So we may not actually be able to demonstrate the actual combat, um, but I mean we'll still go ahead and, and, and use the drones so that you can see how they're to be used. Cross our fingers for a red blip. Mm, hey. There is an enemy ship. Excellent. So, there is an NPC ship over here, Serpentis Spy. I'm going to go ahead and target it. It's got a bounty of 6,000 isk. That's lovely. Now, I could go over there and shoot it, but what I'm going to do is my drone. So, I'm going to right-click. I can right-click on a specific drone, like the Hobgoblin. Launch drones. The other thing you can do is you can just right-click on drones in bay and launch. It'll launch them from the top, I think. Here, we only have Hobgoblins, so it's fine. I now have Hobgoblins orbiting around me. Look at that. Now, this bad boy has gone and targeted me. So, here's what I can do. Ah, notice my hobgoblins and started fighting right away. As soon as this guy engaged and started to shoot me, the hobgoblins went out. They did that because if I click on this little menu, my drones are set to aggressive. I believe this is on by default. If you set them to passive, they will never attack anything on their own. Now, note, even on the aggressive, they won't just automatically attack someone. They will only attack someone that has engaged on you first. So even if you're sitting next to a bad guy, your drones won't attack unless you get shot first. That's on aggressive. Passive it gives you full control because they'll never do anything on their own. But I really like aggressive. I think it's it, most people run their drones on aggressive. The other thing you want to do is put on focus fire. This will cause your drones to try to all target the same person at the same time, which is what you want to do. You want to burn down one person, then move on to the next one instead of scattering your drones all over the place. Aggressive and focus fire, you want both of those on. So let's say that that guy hadn't shot me. Um, and I wanted my drones to engage. Well, again, what you have to do to have your drones engage some, I didn't, oh, okay, let me backtrack a little. My drones would have attacked this dude even if I didn't have him locked, okay? My drones will automatically go and attack anyone who attacks me even if I don't have them locked. But for me to tell them to attack something, I have to have a target lock. So if I were to lock on this wreck, and I'm not entirely sure, I may be able to send the drones out here. So I now have the drones targeted. If I right click on a drone or the entire drones in local space category and I hit engage target, they will go, excellent, and engage the selected target. Now for that, I need to actually have a target. I can't just click on something and select it. I have to actually engage on a target. I guess I could go after these, mar these NPC mining barges, but I'm not going to. So they're going ahead and shooting at this wreck which there's no real reason for me to do that, but what the heck. It'll show the drones. You can see the damage they're doing over here. And I don't have to be doing anything. I can be flying off somewhere else. If the drones fall out of range, um, then, you know, then they'll, they'll no longer work, but that's going to be okay. And yeah, after they're done destroying their target, they'll return to me. By default, they orbit around you. Now, you may remember from the exploration episode, 
we had probes and we would launch the probes and I said, what's great about probes, if you leave the system or you dock or something like that, your probes will automatically be retrieved. That is not the case for your drones. If I were to warp out now, warp to another asteroid belt or warp to a, a dock or go through a Stargate or whatever, these drones would not come with me. They would be left in space. And I'm going to showcase that. So where are we right now? Well, I am at one of these asteroid belts that I, I jumped out to. Um, you know, do we remember which one? Well, yeah, it's this one over here. But I may not always remember. I'm going to set a bookmark for myself. So let's go over here. I'm going to go to personal people and places. Um, on the places tab over here, I'm going to add a location. I'm just going to call it drones so that I can get back to my drones. Because what I'm going to do here is I'm going to warp to something. doesn't matter what I warp to. I'm going to, I'm going to warp to, I don't know, let's say this gate. Okay. I'm not going to jump through it. I'm just going to warp to it. And what's going to happen here, I'm going to leave my drones behind. Active. So as soon as I jump away, come on, you can do it. Go ship. There we go. See, drones in local space goes to zero, but drones in bay, still five. I was supposed to have eight. I left three drones behind. They're just floating there, um, disconnected. Anyone can go, they can blow them up, but they can also scoop them up if they want. They are unowned drones. They have been abandoned. Oh, my babies. It's so tragic. Now, this will happen a lot. You will forget a lot of drones. Um, luckily, if you know where they were, you can warp back to that location. So let me do that now. I'm going to warp back to the location. So either I'd have to remember what asteroid belt I was on or have a bookmark. So I'm going to warp back over. Now, when I do, they still won't show up in this drone window because they're still completely disconnected from me. But if we come back over here, thump, 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 thump. come on, you can do it. Different ships do have different warp speeds, although mostly they're the same. And as far as I know, there's nothing you can change it. There you go. There's my drones. I happen to have the brackets turned on so I can see them. But look, they're still not in my drone window. How do I reconnect to these drones? Down here on your capacitor window, it's really not intuitive, I have to say. To me, like, shouldn't it be maybe in the pull-down menu or something like that? I don't know. On the capacitor window right over here, if you right-click, there's a button that says reconnect to lost drones. If I hit this... Reconnect. There we go. My drones have reconnected over here. Boom. And they're going to go back and orbit me. Look at that. Spiffy. So what do you want to do if you're actually leaving the system and you don't want to leave your drones behind? Right click. Return to drone bay. You can also click on an individual one and tell it to return to the drone bay. Um, scoop, I believe, is for inactive drones. Um, you can scoop to the drone bay. You can also scoop to the cargo hold. Once something's in your cargo hold, keep in mind you won't be able to deploy it again in combat unless you move it to your drone bay when you're at a station but there you go so what i'm going to do here is i'm just going to right click and say return to drone bay and they're going to come back to me there he goes they're all over here in the drone bay they're unstacked now so they it looks a little weird because i have the stack of five and then three individuals but i have all eight drones in my drone bay perfect now when you do have the drones launched you will see yeah i'm getting an error here because i'm trying to launch all eight but i can't i can only control three see these three little bars this is the drone's shields, armor, and structure over here. So you can see if your drones start taking damage, I mean, shield damage is not the end of the world, really, but if it starts taking armor damage, you might want to take that one drone, tell it to return, and then once it's parked back in, you're going to want to tell a different drone to launch so that you can keep yourself, your, your, your drones healthy. Again, these drones are pretty cheap to replace, but the higher-end ones um, are much more expensive. There is a hotkey to quickly cause your drones to return to the drone bay, and that is Shift R. So if I hit Shift R on the keyboard, you can see these guys are returning. Here's the thing: after every fight, you should get in the habit to hit Control R, which will reload all your weapons. Control R to reload, Shift R to bring all your drones back. Do that before you leave a system. You're still gonna forget tons of drones over the course of your your gameplay life. It's just a reality. Get used to it. Um, was there something else I want to discuss with the drones, or are we done? I think that's kind of it. We talked about mining drones. We talked about salvage drones, which again, both of those are Omega only, but they're very, if you are Omega, you'll probably make use of them at some point. Drone combat out there. It's fun. You can target other people's drones. They can target your stuff. Um, as terms of NPCs, NPCs tend to target things of a similar size to them. Um, so NPC frigates will tend to target your own, your, your drones because they're tiny. Um, that's, that's kind of, kind of a moot point. I mean, it's, 
I think it's beyond the scope of this tutorial. Um, yeah, I guess that's it. I don't know, drones are fantastic. If you, um, uh, not this, if you go to the agency and agents and missions and you go to mission agents and you do security agents, which let you do combat against NPC ships, a drone ship is awesome for doing these. Just because the reason they're so great is because NPC sites tend to have a lot of fairly weak ships. So having drones, which move very quickly and can like quickly go around and rip through one of these sites is just a really convenient way to clear out NPCs. Drones are a little less potent with player versus players because with that, I think you tend to want a lot more just like direct, very rapid damage, whereas drones are more sort of like solid damage over time. Although it still totally has a role. Um, I don't want to undervalue drones in any way whatsoever. Again, especially since every ship can pack drones, so you're going to use them. Um, but yeah, so this is a combat mission, so you can talk to any one of these. Uh, it'll default to, um, it's any level, but it'll only show you people that you actually can do, as opposed to ignoring uh, the standing. So this is a level 4 dude, but we're not friendly enough with him to do his missions. Plus, level 4 missions are pretty hard. Level 1s should be perfectly fine to do with, honestly any combat oriented frigate again if you are galente like i am uh ship tree the uh, the incursus will will do a pretty good job blasting things but you'll have to you know you're going to be directly flying the incursus and using small hybrid turret and one and only one drone over here that's it um but it'll do fine or yeah you could possibly probably do things in the tristam with lots of drones you will at some point want to go to the higher level of things. And we've talked about before, um, how do you know what skills you might need? Like, let's say you decide to buy to do a Vexer, which is, you know, a cruiser drone ship. What skills might you need? Again, show info. First, check the requirements. Make sure you have all the requirements you need. Like, we need at least one level of Galente cruiser to fly this, which requires a certain amount of destroyer skill and a certain amount of frigate skill. Okay, so we need that. And then the mastery tab. Again, the mastery tab... The mastery levels don't do anything by themselves. What they are is hints as to these are skills you may find useful for this ship. For example, we don't have level one mastery of the Vexer, and it's because it thinks, hey, we should probably have some medium drone skills over here. Oh, okay. So maybe we can include that in our training plan, for example, these medium drones. And then, you know, at level two, like, what skills do they recommend? And not all of it's important. Like, Tackling is really just useful for stopping other people from warping away, which is mostly a player versus player thing. If you're not using your Vexer for PvP, you don't have to worry about the tackling skills, for example. And some of these skills, even though they're not quote-unquote like required for mastery level 2, say, again, this means nothing by itself, you may want to prioritize them, right? Like, um, you might want to make sure you get, say, your, um, your afterburner skill maxed out as as quickly as possible um you know even though it only says oh afterburner one you might be like listen no i want afterburner five right away because it's a very important part of my of my composition uh they recommend armor tanking skills for the vexer well maybe you'd rather have a powerful shield setup so you're going to look at shield tanking skills instead you know this is not this is not don't take this as gospel but it's a pretty good hint as to what you may want to consider training up if you're a newbie and you're a little bit lost about things there you have it. But anyway, drones are epic. Learn to love them. They're fantastic. You'll use them all the time for all the things. Every ship can use them, so you're going to want to do that. Um, and uh, yeah, in terms of skills that most pilots will want, I foresee that almost everyone in EVE wants the five levels of drone fairly quickly in their career, I would suggest, because five drones is uh, kind of amazing. All right, I think that's good. Um, we are, yeah, 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 Cor the, <laughs> my standing with Serpentis went down because I blew up a Serpentis ship, I got some bounty out of it, um, and, uh, that's good. I'm just gonna go ahead and return to the Dixie, and if I don't remember where all my stuff is, again, there's a button here, personal assets, it's on your, your hotbar by default, but you can also find it in the menu, finances, or not finances, inventory, personal assets, this shows you everything you own in every single system, and then you know, like, oh, right, yeah, the Dixie. This is the this is specifically the station where I've got most of my stuff parked. So I'm going to go ahead and set it as destination. There we go. And I'm just going to go ahead and jump to the Dixie. And that's going to be A-OK. -okay. Awesome. Wonderful. I remember to bring my drones, right? Yes. Excellent. My drone window over here. Yeah, they're all in my bay. Whew. Good. Lovely. The amount of times you forget, man, it's going to be a thing. I tend to keep my drone window, like, front and center right over here. Or maybe over here. Like, I want to make sure I can see the drone situation. I don't want to, I think it defaults to the bottom left or bottom right corner over here. No, 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 no. I want it like way out there just so that I can try to remember to keep my drones in proper order. Folks, thanks for watching another episode. I'm going to see you guys 
next time and keep those questions coming.